What central theme runs through all the Bible? How would you respond, Jesus, the plan of salvation? The cross, yes to all three, of course, but these three important topics unfold against another all-encompassing theme. The great controversy, this theme pervades the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, the great controversy began in heaven with Lucifer's rebellion against God. At the heart of this cosmic conflict is the issue of God's love. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Lesson Study Review. Here with us, we are studying this week, Light Shines into Darkness, and our topic for this morning, Wednesday morning, Human Reasoning Apart from Scripture. But before we go into our discussion, we will have a prayer by Dr. Ellis, and then Ella Ellis will read for us our memory text. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the study of your words. We thank you for the ways in which you have been pointing us to your end of time and preparing us for your soon coming. Bless us as we study and grant that the study might be clear so that all of us can have a closer walk with you for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Our memory text is taken from John chapter 12, verse 35, from the New King James Version. It says, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Amen, amen. So, when look at our, our topic and subtopic context, as well as our memory text insight. So our topics again, our topic for this week, light shines into darkness. And our topic for this morning, Wednesday morning, human reasoning apart from scripture. And also you're going to share with us any insights or main points that stand out to you from our memory text. This week, we'll begin with Dr. Ellis, and then Elder Ellis will come right after. We want to look at light shines in darkness. And that is really critical because light expels darkness. Wherever there is light, there is no darkness at all. Whether, however, the place is dark, once you bring light, the darkness goes away, it vanishes. So it is nice to know that light can take away the darkness from our hearts. And human reasoning apart from scripture is really detrimental. It's dangerous because our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. We can know it. And we of ourselves do not have any kind of reasoning that is like Christ that is Christ-like, except we have the scripture, except we have the Holy Spirit. So human reasoning apart from the scripture is human, and it is error, and it can lead to destruction. We need the scripture. We need the Holy Spirit. And when it comes to our memory text, Jesus said, a little while longer, the light is with you because Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And he was telling his disciples, make use of the moment that you have this light with you. Because when you walk with the light, you will not stumble. But if you walk in darkness, the darkness will overtake you and you will stumble you will fall. So walk in the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. And not knowing where we are going is dangerous. It's like being blinded. I remember being in, in the United States and my GPS went out. I was literally seeing what was blind. I had to pull in the corner when I just got up there and call my son to come and get me 
because I had no clue where I was. So if we walk in darkness, we really do not know where we are going. And that is very dangerous. Now the topic for this week is light shines in the darkness. Definitely, there are some things that cannot coexist. And light and darkness cannot coexist. So if the place is totally dark and light shines, the darkness would be dispelled. And so that is the same with truth and error. Truth is truth. Truth is the light. Truth will dispel darkness. And so when we look at what we are looking at today, our topic for today, human reasoning apart from scripture, human reasoning could be looked at as darkness because human reasoning is basically human opinion. But the scripture is light. The Bible says that the entrance of thy word giveth light. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Therefore, light will show us the way. Human reasoning does not really know the way. And so our memory text is telling us, Then Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Jesus was saying, I'm not going to be here with you all along. He's talking to his disciples. So he says, walk with the light. Follow me. Walk with me. Walk while you have light. Lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going physically. When you walk in darkness, you will lose your way. When you walk spiritually, when you walk in the light, you will find the way. And Jesus was telling his disciples, I am the way. Walk with me. And therefore, darkness would be dispelled. We live in a world where there, there, there lots of darkness is around us. And therefore, we need light so that we can find our way both physically and we need the light of the gospel, the light of God's word, so that we can know the way that Jesus has gone to prepare for us, which is as pilgrims, we know our destination is heaven at last. Amen, amen. So we're going to go into our... We're going to go into our Bibles. We're going to ask Dr. Ellis to read Proverbs 16, 25. Elder Ellis would read for us Judges 21, 25. And I will read Isaiah 53, 6. And our question here is, what do these texts reveal about Satan's strategy of deception? Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man. But its end is the way of this. Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our question again, what do these texts reveal about Satan's strategy of deception? We'll begin with Dr. Ellis and then Elder Ellis. The human being, our reasoning, it is so dark and it is so shaded, cloudy, that when we depend on our own selves, the devil uses us big time. He does not mind how Christian we feel, how Christian we want to be, or how Christian we behave. As long as we depend on, upon our own self, the devil uses it most effectively to deceive us. 
and to lead us to believe that our human, our human thinking is correct. So we have got to always seek God, ask his to him for understanding and to reason with the scripture and asking for the aid of the Holy Spirit because the human reasoning is totally corrupt. What we find is that we all have opinions. They may seem right in our own eyes. And our opinions can be very, very strong, but our opinion we are all entitled to our opinions. But when it comes to spiritual matters, our opinions don't really hold any kind of, of place because spiritual things are not based on our carnal opinions. What we are seeing is that the devil has many strategies. And over this week, we are seeing all the different strategies that he is using. I would not look back into Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, but here today we are seeing one of the strategies he's using is human reasoning. You know, we have brilliant people around People who are wise in their own eyes. People who, according to the worldview, they are worldly wise. People who have gone to lots of schools. And so they are wise in lots of areas. But here we are looking at a battle that is being fought, which is a part of the great controversy where the devil wants to ensure that we who are crises do not make it to Christ's kingdom. He wants to show the universe that Christ's argument or Christ's, uh, what the argument that he has been putting up, that Christ cannot be just and and merciful at the same time. And so he is using this strategy of human reasoning to deceive, to deceive people. And what we find a lot is that folks tend to follow those who seem to be very charismatic, those who preach, those who perhaps are seemingly successful in this world's goods, and they tend to listen to those opinions. However, the, as the Bible says, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But that way is the way of destruction. That is Satan's way. The only right way is through Jesus' word. Jesus is the way. And Jesus has used his word so that he could have defeated the devil. And that's the only way we also can cling to Jesus, use his word, not our own reasoning and, and rationalization, but God's word. That's the word. That's the way that will lead us to life, ever, life everlasting. Amen. So our next question, why is the human mind without the aid of the Holy Spirit, incapable of discovering divine truth? So what is the question? Why? So spiritual things are spiritually dis um, discerned and spiritually interpreted. It is not possible without the aid of the Holy Spirit that we in our carnal flesh can discern that which is spiritual. God gives us his Holy Spirit to interpret his words to us. And therefore, if we decide that we are going to use our reasoning, we are going to really be in some serious, serious trouble. Maybe confusing not only ourselves, but 
everyone that we have influence over. So the reality is that the human mind, without the aid of the Holy Spirit, is truly incapable of truth. The, the, the relationship between human reasoning and divine and revelation, it has, the human reasoning has its place, but it must be aided by the Holy Spirit. It must be guided by the Holy Spirit. Without the aid of the Holy Spirit, it is, in, is incapable and impossible to, dis, to divine or to discover divine truth. When we are speaking about divine revelation, divine revelation comes from God. As Dr. Ellis says, spiritual things are spiritually um, discerned. John 6, 63 tells us, Jesus says, look, the word that I spoke to you, they are spirit and they are life. And so Jesus is divine. His word is divinely revealed. The Bible is a god breed book. Even though human beings wrote it, they wrote under the inspiration of the Spirit. It's not like a textbook that we study in school. It is not Shakespeare. It is not perhaps textbooks that are written on organizational behavior and, and science and literature. It is a book that tells us how to get to, ev to inherit everlasting life. It's a God book, not only a good book, but it's a God book. And as God reveals to us, it is only God who can interpret word to us. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so far is my thoughts from yours. And therefore, we need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us, to interpret the words of God, and not only to aid us in the interpretation, so that not only to have the interpretation, but also to live to exhibit, to practice the interpretation, because to him that know it to do good and do it not, well, to him that is sin. Therefore, human wisdom, we need more than human wisdom when it comes to divine revelation. Man, so a follow-up question, and we begin with Elder Ellis this time around. Discuss the relationship between human reason and divine revelation. How does reason actually help us understand divine, understand divine revelation? For example, look at Daniel chapter 2, a prophecy that covers world history from the time of Babylon to the second coming. How does reason help us to understand divine revelation? God speaks to us through our reason, through our intellect, so that we could understand divine revelation. When we look at the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, and this even brings it out even clearer, what we see was that God gave Nebuchadnezzar a dream. He couldn't even remember the dream. And so, eventually he got hold of Daniel. Daniel had to go back to God so that God could divinely reveal what he wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, in his reasoning, he knew that the dream was very, very important. Now, that dream as I said before, God, the Holy Spirit, interpreted the dream. Human reasoning could not have done it. They said clearly, only the gods, even though they didn't believe in the God of heaven, but the gods 
They clearly stated, only the God whose dwelling is not with man can reveal the interpretation, can reveal what you dreamt and give the interpretation. Now the interpretation, we see that God was revealing to Nebuchadnezzar and as it were to the world, what will happen in the ages to come, what was happening then and what will happen in the ages to come. Human reasoning still came into the picture to execute God's plan because angels will not come and do the work, but it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal and also to enable because we see Daniel the, the use, the purpose, the positions he was placed in so that he also could have carried out what the Holy Spirit had revealed to the king through him and also as it were to Babylon and even as he went on into Medo-Persia and so on. God works with us if we allow ourselves to be used by God. Outside of that, we are hopeless, we are in darkness, and we will not find our way. When we think of relationship, we are looking at something strong, deep, significant, whether it's bad relationship or good relationship. Now, when we are going to look at the relationship between human reason and divine revelation, <laughs> We are seeing here that a relationship does not happen overnight. It takes time. And when we consider the way Daniel and his three friends stood up for against eating that which was not right, and the way God blessed them, and they continue to purpose in their hearts that they will not sin against God, they were building a very strong positive and deep relationship with the Lord. So the relationship between human reason, that they reason they will not sin against God, that they cannot do anything that will hurt God, and divine revelation, God is able to speak through them. God is able to trust them with responsibility. God is able to, to expose them to deeper truths and to enlighten their minds as to things that will take place. So the, the how does the reason actually help us understand divine revelation? Because that reasoning that is being trained by the Holy Spirit because we have purposed in our hearts that we will serve the Lord. And when we look at that, then God is able to help us to understand divine revelation. So it is not by accident that we are able to understand what God has in store for us. He said that the angel of the Lord reveals secrets to his servants. God will reveal secrets to us when our reasoning are in alignment with his will and when our lives are controlled by the Holy Spirit. We see Daniel in Daniel 2. When the king could not have remembered his dream and when he passed the decree that all the wise men, Chaldeans and astrologers should die, he never thought of Daniel. He was just working right through without even asking Daniel. But Daniel was able to save their lives and with God's help, calling a prayer meeting, not be, um, depending upon his own wisdom, God was able to reveal important truths to him. And the beautiful thing is, when we are in alignment with God, we do not take the credit to ourselves. Daniel made it very clear that the men of this world with human reason 
could never have interpreted that dream. And he also said, I could not have interpreted that dream myself, save for the help of God, the help of the God of heaven the who, and the Holy Spirit. So with God in our sides, in our corner, with God being beside us through the aid of his Holy Spirit, we will be triumphant and we will be able to understand divine revelation. So our next follow-up question, um, keeping in line with our questions before, how does a prophecy like this powerfully appeal to human reason? How does a prophecy like this powerfully appeal to human reason? We begin with Elder Ellis and Dr. Ellis will come right after. Human beings like to look into things that are somewhat futuristic, things that are present to see how it applies to the future. When we look at the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2, one will be somewhat, somewhat encouraged to want to look into it because we like to know what will happen. How does it affect us as individuals, as a people? And so the human mind likes to look into things that will stretch their mind and that's why folks pay money to go to those that peep and mutter necromancers and so on that's why the the king in daniel chapter 2 had so many soothsayers and so on around him because they want to know what will happen now when we look at daniel the book of daniel we see that Christ would have revealed what will happen throughout the ages until the coming of the Messiah. We, when we look at the kingdoms, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, the divided empire, and so on, right down to our time, we are all, even at this stage, very, very intrigued. But what we see in it is that God does not leave his people in darkness. We are studying this week, light shines in the darkness. God does not leave his people in the darkness. But as Dr. Ellis said just now, she quoted Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And so the prophecy of Daniel 2 even goes right down to the coming of the Son of Man because when we look at the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, what we did see was that when you get down to the toes that will would be of iron mixed with clay, after that, the other thing that happened, a stone was cut out without hand that struck the heel of the image and it became a, a mountain, which means that Jesus eventually will come and put an end to world empires and set up his kingdom. And that is good news for God's people. So how does the prophecy like this powerfully appeal to human reason when we see governments around us trying as it were to speak great words and trying to set up as it were great kingdoms we are better educated because of the prophecy of daniel chapter 2 that look this will happen for a time but jesus will come in and set up his kingdom. We might be treated in all sorts of manner now, but the time is coming soon when we will inherit that kingdom that Jesus is setting up. And that's good news for me. The prophecy 
influences or powerfully influence or appeal to human reason because it leaves us with enough information that we can look down through the corridor of history to see how precise the prophecies came to pass. And that really intrigues human reasoning. It causes us by the aid of the Holy Spirit to begin to focus on the powerful authenticity of God, of the universe, of his creation, of his words, and his might to save. So when we look at Daniel 2, and we recognize his, the divine leading in the lives of human beings years and years before it happened, human beings begin to reason and it's it's obvious as long as we have a mind that is inquisitive a mind that we have submitted to the holy spirit then we will begin to understand that we do not have much time remaining and it is imperative that we prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it appeals to the human reason. It causes us to want to investigate. It causes us to want to be closer drawn to God. It helps us to believe in him more, to know that he is real, to know that he is able to see the future to know that he is able to lead us and that we can actually put our trust in him knowing that he has a plan for our lives and that he will see us through. So it appeals to the human and reason, in my opinion, that it helps us to really trust and believe in God with all our hearts because he is the one God who knows everything, and Nebuchadnezzar attested to that fact. That has brought us to the end of our discussion. However, we still have our takeaways, and I am sure that our panelists have many things that they could take away. However, they can only choose one. So we'll begin with Dr. Ellis this time around. And we're going to share with us what is your takeaway from our lesson this morning, and then Elder Ellis will also come and share his takeaway as well. I am truly happy that Christ has not left us in darkness and that he has a plan for our lives, that his desire is to save us and that if we are willing by the aid of the Holy Spirit that he will prepare us for his soon coming and that we can prepare others as well. My takeaway is based on today's lesson, human reasoning apart from scripture. Human reasoning apart from the word of God is just human reasoning. Human reasoning may help me in this life where to a large extent, things are very materialistic and so on. But Jesus says that I should lay up treasures in heaven. My treasure should go before me. And I can only learn that from the scripture. Apart from the scripture, I might be very, very materialistic because my heaven would be right here. However, I want to enjoy life here and I want to enjoy life with Jesus Christ and I want to and I want to see others enjoy life too. So the scripture teaches me even while I'm looking for the coming of Jesus Christ, I must also help to hasten his coming by not being selfish, but by doing what the scripture 
scripture says, what God says, so that others also may be a part of that inheritance. And that has brought us to the end of our discussion this morning. We are grateful that you could have joined us. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when our topic will be Battle for the Mind. So share the link with the family, share the link with a friend, and join us as we continue to study together.